Hi guys, in the last lecture we covered magnetic circuits and magnetic materials. In magnetic circuits, we saw three terms. First one was MMF, then we saw flux, and then we saw reluctance. We saw the relation between these three, MMF is equal to flux into reluctance, which is similar to the Ohm's law. And MMF was given by number of turns into current through each turn. Reluctance was given by L upon mu A. Then we moved on to magnetic materials and we saw magnetic materials are those which can be magnetized. Then we saw different categories of the magnetic materials. First we saw diamagnetic materials. The materials in which dipoles get oriented in the direction opposite to the magnetic field. But the intensity of magnetization is pretty less and the magnetization is non-persistent. That is, it persists only up to the point the magnetic field is applied. Then we saw paramagnetic material. In paramagnetic materials, the dipoles get oriented in the same direction as the magnetic field, but here also the magnetization is non-persistent. That is, it lasts up to the point where the magnetic field is applied. Then we saw ferromagnetic. We saw that in ferromagnetic material, we have spontaneous magnetization. That is, magnetization even in the absence of magnetic field. So after being magnetized, these materials retain some of the magnetism and do not lose it completely. Hence the magnetization here is persistent. And we saw these materials are strongly magnetized in the presence of magnetic field. Last one we saw was ferrimagnetic. In ferrimagnetic we saw the neighboring dipoles get oriented in the opposite direction. But the Intensity of magnetization is not equal, hence there is net magnetization in the direction of magnetic field. But that net magnetization is weak. So why do we go for these materials? We go for these materials solely because they have high resistivity, due to which the eddy current losses will be lesser. Hence, ferrimagnetic materials are preferred for high frequency transformer and ferromagnetic materials for low frequency transformer. Now let us start with our first electrical machines that is my transformer. So a transformer is nothing but it is a device which is used to transform the voltage. Okay. How does it transforms the voltage? It just shifts the voltage level up or down without changing the frequency. Now suppose I give you an AC voltage like this. Then what the transformer will do, it can either increase the level like this or it can decrease the level like this. But it will keep the frequency same. That is the functionality of the transformer. If it increases the level that is output voltage is greater than input voltage it is called as step up transformer. If output voltage is less than input voltage, it is called as step down transformer. Just depending upon the level of voltage, we can classify the transformer into two categories. And if V out is equal to V in, it is called as isolation transformer. Why? Because it is not changing the voltage level. It is just providing isolation between the primary and the secondary side. Now let us understand what do we mean by primary and secondary in case of transformer. Usually a transformer will be represented by this structure. This is the core of the transformer. Core means the magnetic material which is responsible for passing the flux through it. Okay. As we just now saw there are different magnetic materials. These magnetic materials are utilized to create the core of the transformer. Okay. Now upon this core, we wind the windings. 
like this the winding which is connected to the source is shown on the left hand and the winding which is connected to the load is shown on the right hand this winding to which the source is connected is called as primary winding and the winding to which load is connected is called as secondary winding okay now what happens when the current flows in this winding a flux will be created like this now this flux will be time varying due to sinusoidal nature of the current since current is time varying mmf which is equal to ni will also be time varying due to which the flux is also time varying due to this flux being linked to the secondary winding an emf will be developed across the secondary winding okay so application of the voltage across the primary results in induction of the voltage across the secondary that is how voltage is transformed between primary and secondary winding that is the basic functionality of the transformer it transforms the supply voltage into the voltage across the secondary it transfers the voltage basically so that is how my transformer works it just works on the principle of statically induced emf the flux that we generate or the mf that we generate is time varying so it will induce a flux across the primary and secondary windings now let us understand what kind of materials do we use to construct this core of the transformer see as we know with current that the current tries to take the path of minimum resistance similarly in magnetic circuits the flux tries to follow the path of minimum reluctance so we want that the flux should be confined to the core of the transformer it must not go through the air why is it because we want that the flux should be linked between primary and secondary winding and to do that it must pass through the core of the transformer it must not go into the air so we want that the core should have a low reluctance so that maximum flux is confined to the core so which means core must have low reluctance and high permeability because reluctance is equal to l by mu a if reluctance is low permeability must be high why because the flux must be confined to the core we don't want any flux to go into the air the flux that goes into the air will not link the secondary winding and it will be called as leakage flux so leakage flux is nothing but it is the flux which only links one of the two windings but not both now what we do is we generally use silicon steel for construction of core of the transformer why we use silicon steel first of all it is a ferromagnetic material as i told you we need materials which can be strongly magnetized so we need ferromagnetic materials so silicon steel is an example of a ferromagnetic material that is why it will have low reluctance and high permeability next thing is concerned with the hysteresis loss now in any magnetic material we have two kind of losses hysteresis and eddy current that we'll study later on but hysteresis loss is proportional to bm raised to the power x bm is the maximum value of magnetic flux density inside the core this x is called as hysteresis coefficient so higher the x higher is the hysteresis loss for silicon steel x is low h is equal to 1.6 so that is why the hysteresis loss will also be lesser so we prefer silicon steel for construction of core of the transformer it has low reluctance high permeability so the flux will be confined to the core next thing is that it will have lesser hysteresis losses but generally we use a modified version of silicon steel which is called as crgo 
steel. Now, what is CRGO steel? It is cold rolled grain oriented. This is just a process which is applied to the silicon steel to make it CRGO steel. Now, what happens? As we know, in the core of the transformer, flux will flow in a specified direction. Like I showed you, the flux was flowing like this. Okay. So, when we are considering permeability, we only want to consider permeability in the direction of flow of flux because other directions do not matter. Suppose if we take this Z direction, then this direction does not matter to me. Why? Because there is no flux in this direction. So what does CRGO steel has in special is it has high permeability in the direction of magnetization that is in the direction of the flux. So in this direction permeability is high. So that is the benefit of the CRGO steel that permeability is increased in one direction. Which direction is that? the direction in which flux is flowing inside the material. In that direction, it will have high permeability. So it will have low reluctance. Next up is lamination. So first of all, what does silicon steel do? Silicon steel reduces stress is loss okay but while adding silicon one effect is also there that it increases resistivity so we know eddy current losses are inversely proportional to resistivity as I told you in ferrimagnetic materials also so eddy current losses will also decrease as resistivity increases so silicon steel has lesser eddy current losses and hysteresis losses then it would seem to me that why not add more and more silicon if it can increase resistivity to reduce the eddy current losses. No, we cannot add any amount of silicon to the steel. We can only add up to 4%. Why? Because adding silicon makes the steel brittle. Brittle means it can easily break under mechanical stress. But when we are designing the core of the transformer, we need to give it a shape. We need to mold it into the desired shape. If the steel becomes brittle, then while molding it, we may get some cracks or we may break the core. That will be totally undesirable. So we do not go beyond 4% otherwise, while constructing the core, the core material may break. So silicon makes the steel brittle. Brittle means easy to break. So we must find out other methods to make the eddy current losses lesser okay that one such method is called as lamination so what happens instead of taking the entire core material like this we divide it into smaller lamination or thinner laminations like this we divide it into thinner laminations like this and between two laminations we will have insulation what kind of insulation do we use that we'll see later on first of all let us understand the motivation behind this the eddy currents are nothing but the currents that flow in closed path like a eddy in a sea the current that are flowing in closed path like this the longer the path or the larger the diameter of the circle the more the resistance faced by it because resistance is equal to rho l by a so the larger the diameter, more is the length of the path traveled by the current. So if it is like this, the length of the path is more, resistance will also be more. Hence, I square R losses will also be higher. But if we laminate the material, then the length of magnetic paths reduces like this. Okay. So why does it reduce? Because the current cannot go beyond the insulation. Insulation does not permit the flow of the current from one lamination to other. So length of the magnetic path reduces. Resistance is less. I square R losses will also be less. 
that is the benefit of the insulation or the lamination now what kind of materials do we generally prefer for lamination or insulation is first is china clay next is japan varnish next is impregnated paper and last one is oxide paint so these are some of the material that we prefer for construction of the insulation between the lamination now because of the insulation the net cross sectional area or the cross sectional area of the core will increase because insulation will also occupy some space so we define gross cross sectional area as the cross sectional area of core plus insulation but the flux will depend on the cross sectional area of the core only it does not depend on the insulation so we define net cross sectional area as the cross sectional area of the core so we define a stacking factor which is ratio of these two that is net cross sectional area by gross cross sectional area so that is what my stacking factor is okay net cross sectional area refers to the effective cross sectional area that is the cross sectional area of the core material and gross cross sectional area represents the total cross sectional area that is the core plus insulation so this factor will always be less than 1 now what we want is we want that the laminations should be tightly riveted that is they must be tightly joined why suppose the laminations are not tightly joined then what will happen there will be an air gap between the two lamination this is my air gap and as we saw in the last lecture whenever an air gap is introduced in the path of flow of the flux what will happen then then the reluctance increases and we saw mmf which was n into magnetizing current is equal to flux into reluctance for constant flux magnetizing current will increase this increase in magnetizing current is undesirable because it reduces the power factor of the machine so we want that the magnetizing current should be as low as possible so that is why this air gap is undesirable so these laminations must be tightly fitted there must be no air gap between the two laminations next phenomena that we study is called as magnetostriction it is a very commonly observed phenomena in the magnetic materials what happens as we apply the magnetic field to a material its dimension changes why does it happen because there are magnetic dipoles in the material like south north south north there are magnetic dipoles in a magnetic material on application of the magnetic field these dipoles are stretched due to increase in length of these dipoles the dimension of the material also changes that is called as magnetostriction okay by application of field dimension changes that will be what is called as magnetostriction so what happens if the if we apply ac voltage in a transformer we do apply ac so it will have alternate positive and negative polarity so here suppose dimension increases for positive field then dimension will reduce for the negative field due to which what will happen the core of the transformer will continuously expand and contract the core dimension will increase then decrease it will increase then decrease so the core will be vibrating and we know whenever anything vibrates it has some frequency if this frequency lies in the audible range we will be able to hear the vibrations of the core due to which 
we hear a humming sound so humming sound in case of transformer is due to the magnetostriction why does magnetostriction occurs because the dipoles get lengthened or the length of the dipole magnetic dipole changes on application of a field so the dimension of the magnetic material changes so this is the phenomena observed in most of the transformer next let us study what are the shape of the core material or the core of the transformer we just now study what kind of core should be there now let us see what kind of possible constructions are there first construction is called as core type transformer in this core type transformer we have a rectangular core and on the two outer limbs of the core we have the two windings from now on we will not call the windings as primary or secondary we will call them as low voltage and high voltage because primary and secondary behavior can be interchanged you can apply the source on any side of the transformer that is why we will call them as low voltage and high voltage based on their voltage rating so in a core type transformer the windings are wound on the outer limbs of the core so that is why in between we have the core and on the outside we have the winding so my core is surrounded by winding okay now since the flux is constant in the entire core the reluctance of each and every limb will be connected in series as i told you whenever the flux is same we have a series connection so all reluctances will be connected in series so here we will apply mmf and we will get the flux so it has a series magnetic circuit now what are the properties of this type of transformer is it requires lesser insulation okay now insulation is related to the voltage rating of the machine so it has high voltage rating okay the thing is since it requires lesser insulation if you keep more insulation it will have more voltage rating because by default it requires lesser so if you give more then you will get the more voltage rating then it requires more amount of copper copper means the material that is required for the windings the windings are usually made of copper so it requires more amount of copper that means the resistance of the windings will also be high r means resistance of the winding but we want the losses in the winding to be less i square r losses should be less so current should be less since the resistance is already high we cannot flow a high current because then the losses will be very high so current should be less so it has low current rating it has high voltage rating and low current rating and both the limbs of the transformer have equal cross section area okay both the limbs have equal cross section area and we prefer interleaved windings i will show you what is interleaving we preferred here interleaved windings so these are some of the properties of the core type of transformer this is the structure that we generally use to represent a transformer but remember its application comes when we have high voltage and low current requirement next type of construction is shell type of transformer in shell type of transformer we have three limbs in the core on the central limbs both the primary and secondary windings are placed and outer limbs are kept empty now as the flux is generated phi it gets distributed into two paths phi by 2 and phi by 2 now due to the flux distribution we can say it has a parallel magnetic circuit because only in parallel connection can the flux be divided so here the flux will go phi by 2 here also the flux will go phi by 2 okay so it has a parallel magnetic circuit since here winding is in the center and core material is outside we can say 
वाइंडिंग इज सराउंडेड बाय कोर ओके इन कोर टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मर वाइंडिंग वॉज आउटसाइड कोर वॉज इन साइड हेयर वाइंडिंग इज इन साइड एंड कोर इज आउटसाइड सो लेट अस सी सम ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ शेल टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मर इट रिक्वायर्स मोर इंसुलेशन सिंस इट ऑलरेडी रिक्वायर्स मोर इंसुलेशन यू कैनॉट इंक्रीज द इंसुलेशन एंड यू कैनॉट इंक्रीज द वोल्टेज रेटिंग सो इट हैज लेस वोल्टेज रेटिंग नेक्स्ट इज इट रिक्वायर्स लेस कॉपर सिंस कॉपर लेस रिक्वायर्ड दैट मीन्स रेजिस्टेंस इज लेस सो वी कैन अप्लाई हायर करेंट okay so it has higher current rating then if you see the outer limbs have the cross sectional area a by 2 and the inner limb has the cross sectional area a so outer limb has 50% area of the inner limb okay that is the property of the shell type of the transformer so remember where we will use the shell type transformer where we have low voltage and high current rating requirement there we will always use the shell type of the transformer okay and we will see how the core type and shell type will differ when we talk about the third harmonics in the transformer now let us see now we know the construction of the core how to place the windings on the core usually the windings are interleaved on the core now as i was showing you in the transformer the windings are generally placed on different limbs or they do not coincide what i mean to say is the two windings are separate but in practical scenario it is not like that the two windings are wound over each other why is it so if one winding is like this and other winding is like this wounded on the same core and over the one winding that is the two windings are concentric but they have different radius in terms of cylinder if this is my inner winding this will be my outer winding so what happens is the flux linkage is very well that means more and more amount of flux is linked from one winding to the other winding so we have high coefficient of coupling that is the wasted flux or the leakage flux is lesser but the linking flux the flux linking the primary and secondary winding is high that is why we prefer the interleaving of the winding or windings being wound on the same core but with a different radii now this is what i have shown i have shown the cross sectional area so first we have placed the low voltage winding then we have placed the high voltage winding there is a specific reason behind why i want to place the low voltage winding on the inside the reason for placing the low voltage winding on the inside is i told you that insulation determines the voltage rating okay similarly diameter of the conductor determines current rating as you may have seen for high current applications the wire that we use is thicker and temperature rise of the machine determines the kva rating these three ratings of the machine depends on these three parameters for any machine whatsoever not only transformer for dc machine synchronous induction for any machine these ratings are decided on this basis so if you see the low voltage winding is placed inside that means since it has low voltage the insulation requirement will also be lesser so this insulation which lies between core and the low voltage winding is reduced and if insulation is reduced the cost will also be reduced okay this is one of the reasons why we place the low voltage winding on the inside and high voltage winding on the outside the other reason is suppose this is my low voltage winding this is my high voltage winding sometimes we construct the tap changing transformer 
tap changing transformer means in which we can alter the number of turns in the winding. So we provide output terminals like this. So we can take the output between these two terminal or between these two. So by reducing the number of turns we can change the voltage. So the benefit of the tap changing transformer is we can change the output voltage as per our desire. So these taps are usually provided in the high voltage winding. Why? Because we can have more variation in the voltage when it comes to the high voltage winding. That is why high voltage winding is kept outside so okay, that we can easily tap the winding. So we keep it outside and low voltage winding on the inside. So that is the reason we interleave the windings. We interleave because we want more and more flux should be linking from the primary to secondary. So coefficient of coupling should be high. Then we want that low voltage winding should be inside so that the insulation requirement is lesser and we can provide the taps on the high voltage winding for changing the number of turns and thus changing the voltage. Now, if both the windings are wound on the same end, then they carry current in the opposite direction. As you can see here, the dots and crosses in these two windings are in opposite order. Here we have a cross, in other winding we have a dot. Why is it so? Let us see the direction of flux. If this is dot, this is cross, this is dot, this is cross, then you must try to find the direction of flux by right hand thumb rule. So if you curl your fingers in the direction of current, the direction of thumb like this will give you the direction of flux. The flux is going in the downward direction. Now Lenz law states that induced current must suppose the cause of induction. So the other winding must have the flux upwards. Suppose we take dot and cross here. If you curl the finger thumb will come upwards. So flux is upwards. So we want both the fluxes should oppose each other in accordance with the Lenz law. That is why when the windings are wound on the same limb they will have current in the opposite direction. But when they are wound in the opposite limb, then what will happen? The flux is downwards. It will travel in a closed path like this. So in this limb, the flux is upwards. To oppose this flux, this winding must also generate the flux downward. So it will have dots and crosses like this. That means it carries the current in the same direction. So remember, if the windings are wound on the opposite limbs, the current induced is in the same direction. If windings are wound on the same limb, then the current induced is in opposite direction. Now let us see, since we know the current direction, what kind of force exists between the windings. So, one winding, let me say the low voltage winding was like this. We had insulation, then this was low voltage winding, dot and cross. Then we again have insulation. Then we have high voltage winding which carries current in opposite direction that is dot and cross. Now let us see the magnetic field produced by the low voltage winding. Keep your thumb in the direction of current. So if it is coming out then your thumb must be coming out. Then the direction of your fingers will give me the direction of magnetic field. So if you are taking dot the magnetic field would be coming anti-clockwise. So magnetic field would be like this. Okay. So now for this conductor the magnetic field is going upwards. Current is like this. To find the force what you will do? You will curl your fingers from the direction of current. Current is like this. Magnetic field is like this. Curl your fingers and the direction of curl your fingers from this that is from current towards the magnetic field then the direction of thumb will give you the direction of force. What I am trying to find is force in accordance with the Lorentz law I L cross B. So the force will be coming like this. So these winding will feel a repulsive force. That is why these windings must be tightly riveted so that this repulsive force does not damage the windings. Windings will try to push each other away due to currents being in the opposite direction. Remember this, the repulsive force exists between the two windings. 
so this is all about the construction of the transformer first we saw the properties of core material then what kind of core constructions do we use and then how do we place the windings on the core now let us see what are the expectations from an ideal transformer the first property of core material that we saw was low reluctance and high permeability now i want that the entire flux should be linked to the core in case of electrical circuits we have seen that when we short circuit the circuit then entire current flows through the short circuit similarly here if we make the reluctance zero entire flux will flow through that reluctance so ideal transformer should have zero reluctance or infinite permeability so that entire flux flows through the core of the winding the other reason is due to zero reluctance what will happen since we know ni mu is equal to phi into reluctance if flux is constant zero reluctance means zero magnetizing current that is always desirable that there should be no magnetizing current in the transformer so that power factor is improved and this implies that without application of any current i am generating the flux that is why it is called as ideal we need no current to generate the magnetic flux inside the core next thing is that we saw two losses hysteresis and eddy current these must be zero there should be no core loss in the transformer these two losses are commonly called as core loss because they occur in the core of the transformer next we saw that winding will have some resistance due to which copper losses will be there so resistance of winding must be zero so that copper losses zero next there should be no leakage of the flux from the core to the air leakage flux must be zero and last magnetization curve must be linear that is b and h must be directly proportional there must be no saturation that is the properties of the ideal transformer and we will remove each and every assumption one by one to construct the practical transformer these are just the assumptions that we consider in an ideal transformer so what we have learnt in this lecture we saw properties of core then we saw construction of the core that is core type and shell type then we saw winding we saw interleaving of the winding and we saw that the both the windings repel each other then we saw the concept of ideal transformer okay in the next lecture what we'll do is we'll start removing these assumptions so that we can arrive at the model of a practical transformer or we can see how these different non idealities are modeled in case of a practical transformer